Hey, Joe Gill back again, and I'm here to talk to you about the Soviet Union. I'm just going to give you a brief, this is a video on a, just, well, not brief. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. Like, uh, these next set of videos is just going to be all on Russia and Soviet Union and all that. The reason why I'm calling it Soviet Union because it was 26 years, summer of 1991, that it was there last. So it was an entirely different place, which is why it's not going to be so much of a, you know, sex guide and video and info information because all my information was uh would be nil like back then um i was paying 50 60 bucks for like an all-nighter with a russian gal it's not that anymore i can tell you right now it i'm assuming don't don't get me wrong i'm assuming Russian gal, Russian Ukrainian will probably cost you anywhere from 300, a couple hundred to 300 to possibly 500, you know, especially if you want them to spend the night. Um, they're not communists anymore and all that stuff. So um, that's the thing. And, I, and, you know, and you would where you go was was the Russian restaurants like in Leningrad. It was the Nevsky. Uh, another one, like in Moscow, was a Hotel Russia. I don't even know if these places are there, if they're still open. So I can't really give you any of this information because I just have, from what I recall from 26 years ago, the names of restaurants are places to go. Who knows if they're even there? And, and the prices are definitely totally different. I can just give you that estimate or whatever, and you just might have to do your research. However, since it was so long, the reason why I want to do a set, set of videos is I want to... Um, I was there for such a long time. I was there for like two months. No, a month and a half from June 6th to like uh, July 20th. I was supposed to stay there till August 8th, but I cut it short. I was, supposed to, I was there six weeks. Well, I was in Europe for six weeks. I wasn't in Russia. I was in Russia for almost, um, Russia or Soviet Union for like, maybe just shy of a month or something like that. The cities I went to, I went to Leningrad, Leningrad, which is now, um, well, it's called St. Petersburg now, and Moskva, Kalenin, Tver, Oryol, and Kiev. So, um, <clears throat> I went to all those cities. We drove. Well, me and, uh, and I went with a buddy, of course. Um, he was pretty handy because he spoke fluent Russian. Well, no, he spoke good Russian. He spoke fluent German. He knew how to read, write, read, write, and, and you might remember him. It was a guy named Steve. Uh, Steve Brunier, I'll get more into the introduction um, in, a, in a second. Uh, he was born and raised here. He is a former neighbor of mine uh, who immigrated to Canada. And uh, he lived in Toronto. You might have heard me mention him if you watched the Cuba, uh, the Cuba videos I made. Because, uh, and you know, he was like an old friend, a friend of the family's. I've known him since I was 11 years old. I used to take care of his dog, water his lawn when he went out of town because um, I went over there asking him for work when I was a kid, when I was like 11, 12 years old. And, you know, oh, can I mow your lawn? Can I clean your yard, rake your leaves or do whatever? And all that. So, um, you know, um, that's with that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so. I mean, that's the thing. That's why I can't really give you any, because um, like I said, it was practically a generation ago. But what I want to do with these uh, these videos is I just want to kind of talk about some of my different experiences. I'm going to do a number. I don't know. I'm estimating about maybe I'll probably do about maybe three to four more videos after this. And I'll give a, a quick uh, indent of what it's going to be. This is just basically how I got started in an introduction and all that. <clears throat> And all that stuff. Well, um, and all this stuff. Uh, but this is my first official trip. This is my first real major international trip. Well, I shouldn't say major because, like I said, I went to Canada in 1990. And I went to the Bahamas in 90. It was a graduation cruise. And that's when I graduated. It was the class of 1990. <clears throat> so, anyway. Um, but, uh... But as far as the videos, I'm just going to talk about different stuff. I'm probably going to, um, oh, you mentioned a, a story or something like that. And I'm going to talk maybe about the psychological ma um, makeup of what what I what I experienced from Russian women, their attitude and all that, their personality and stuff. It was kind of a life-changing trip and a trip for me. And 
I was definitely a different, I was a diff different person. You know, I was young, was naive, I was pussy whipped. I still kind of wanted to um, get married. I still was open for marriage way back then, you know, at that age. Um, I knew I didn't really want to have kids and all that. So I was a totally different person. I wasn't as what I would consider quote unquote MGTOW, uh, somewhat MGTOW as I am now. Um, anyway, um, so that's what I want to do. I just want to share, you know, um, stories, some kind of funny stories or whatever. And like I said, you know, my view of the psychological makeup and all that and uh, of, of the women and stuff like that. Uh, now, for how I got started, how um, I was over in Toronto and, and Steve, this guy, he had a history with Russia. He made his first trip in 1969 and he, he made like four trips. He went in 1969 was first time. 1977, I believe. Then he went in like 85 or 86 and then like 88 or 89 and he wanted to go back. One of the reasons why he wanted to go back is he had a main squeeze there. He was banging some chick. Her name was Myrna or Myrna in Moscow. And I think he kind of wanted, he wanted to head back there. The way we did it, way we got in is um, we had to, we had to, I had to have a visa. We had to have a visa and he sort of set it up as a business trip. And we drove. We our plan was uh, his plan was to rent a car in Amsterdam. We were going to drive through Scandinavia and enter through the north through Finland, and we were going to drive uh, to Leningrad. So um, we were going to drive literally drove through Russia, drove an actual car through freaking Russia, uh, the Soviet Union actually, so to speak. <clears throat> anyway. Um, but that's what happened. I was over there visiting. He was telling me, and he was kind of t talking about Russian women with me for a little bit, telling me, oh, they're so passionate. They love America. They love sex. And they're extremely sexual. And basically, in a sense, you heard me mention, uh, if you watch my other videos, something about a pro-sexual society. That's what he was presenting Russia. And I'll get into that when I talk more about the, you know, and I do another video talking about the psychology and the Russian, Russian, the so-called Russian attitude and all this and the Russian persona. I'll do that in another video. But anyway, yeah, he was talking about, he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to camp, do it affordable and uh, can't do stay at campsites, stay in a log cabin or pinch a tent and all this stuff. And it's going over the general and at first I wasn't crazy about it because I didn't think I would have enough money and he was telling me. So I decided, okay, I told him no. I told him, I go, I don't think I can do it. Sorry, kind of count me out. And that wasn't when I was there visiting in August. Well, by the end of September, I changed my mind. I said, okay, I'm going to make, and I, this is going to make you laugh. I figured, well, this is a once in a lifetime thing. I'll probably never take an international trip again. And da, 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 da. I should really do this. I should, if I start saving now, September, I can probably make it to June and everything. So I called him up and I said, okay, count me in definitely. What do I got to do? And I literally was preparing for the trip, saving and everything, planning, getting my passport and all this stuff, telling, telling my friends or family for Christmas, I just, you know, give me money towards the trip and all that, you know, and everything. <clears throat> so, yeah, but he's, he's kind of gone on and, and crowed, crowed of, crooned and crowed about Russian women and telling me, oh, they love some da 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 and, you know, not so much when I first knew him when I was 11 years old or 12 years old, but lately when I was a teenager, my situation was I was a little bit heartbroken. I had broken up with my um, uh, one of my high school sweet or sweethearts back um, earlier that year when I was still in high in a senior right before I graduated. It was I think it was officially over, you know, technically officially over by March of 1990 and all that. So. He was planning this for around June 6th of 91, and we were going to stay, the plan was to stay to August 8th, and we were going to drive through all of Scandinavia, um, uh, spend about a month in Russia. We were either going to go out through Poland or Czechoslovakia. We ended up going out through Czechoslovakia, and that's another thing. It wasn't the Czech and Slovak. It was all one country back then. And then we went out and went into uh, former Eastern Germany. Uh, and I went to Western Germany and that was a big deal because it was only two years after the wall that went down so that's why he really wanted to go to Dresden and Leipzig and all that but anyway so that was the kind of deal and um, like I said um, I wasn't into that I wasn't really into 
you know, soliciting women or paying for it and all that. And I wasn't really looking forward to it, although I didn't object to it. He would say, no, well, you can meet girls here. You can pick up girls. And he said, they're easy to pick up and date and all that is another thing I was trying to promote. You just maybe give them the demise that you, you're going to come back there and revisit him or maybe give them, you know, sort of manipulate him a little bit that you might marry him and move back, but you don't and all that stuff. And that was a big thing back in the early nineties with, uh, the whole mail order bride thing was coming out with Russia and all that stuff. And, you know, that's when they started having the matchmaking services about a couple of years after I went there and all that stuff. But, they, you know, it wasn't so much when I was there. But according to him, uh, they've always been sexual. I mean, he even said that he was getting tail. Uh, he was getting nookie back in 69 when he was there. And I was blown away because that he went there at that time, you know, that's like the height of the Cold War, the height of the uh, Vietnam War, Vietnam War, and all that stuff, and so I was kind of like blown away. But anyway, um, that's kind of how I got started. I mean, like I said, um, I was a different person that then. I was, you know, totally more relationship relationship oriented. I wasn't so much. Um, about casual sex, I was a, I was definitely a pussy whipped, pussy whipped type of guy. So, um, which might make some of my stories funny. And I, I didn't really go over there with the intention, and you know, with what I came back as, I, I joked around. It's like, man, I went in there kind of naive and not even, never really knowing how to deal or talk about or negotiate with prostitutes. And I got it like a crash course when I was there, and I came back. And I joke around because I came back with um, as like with a master's degree and in, in negotiating or bargaining with women for sex and all that. I'll explain that. I have a few kind of stories that, uh, you know, that I'll tell in, in future videos that are kind of funny. But other than that, that includes my introduction. I mean, uh, and how I got started. Like I said, this is the first official sex trip that I took and uh, the pebble drop and, you know, that got me started on my adventures of, uh, traveling around the world, looking for tail, looking for nookie and getting laid. So, um, anyway, stay tuned. Um, this is kind of going to be my last country cause I don't really have any other countries. I've, I've covered everything I visited and, but I'm going to do a few videos and tell a few stories about this and, you know, about this country, about my visit and all that. And I uh, hope you like it. Until then, until the next time, uh, happy trails, happy travels, and I'll talk to you later.